Hello and good morning. I'm here this morning in the beautifully renovated home outside Brandon. Good morning, Suzanne Keenan and James Shukru, Project Architects with Shukru Design. Hi, hey, Victoria. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you, Suzanne? Great, Victoria. So listen, when um, the clients uh, bought the site and um, there was an existing dwelling and outbuilding on it, can you just explain what the house was like when, when it was first bought? The clients had bought um, an existing property. It had a cottage and it had an outbuilding on it. Um, the cottage had been renovated in the 90s, but I guess it was a very basic renovation, just enough for someone to live in it rather than bringing it up to the standards of the time. So the clients uh, were moving from the uh, middle of the country and they wanted to downsize from a family home to a more comfortable one bedroom house. So the brief was really to create um, a comfortable one bedroom home with the taking in the amazing views that there are in Brandon. Uh, the planning application uh, was relatively straightforward as there was an existing house on site, but we did upgrade the wastewater treatment unit at the same time. And once planning was granted, then we went ahead with uh, constructing the extension and the refurbishment of the house. Part of their brief was to um, include as much as possible the view over Brandon Bay. They're a very outdoor couple. Uh, so to have that connection with the outside, the connection with nature and uh, all of the, the hedgerows, stone walls, any uh, natural uh, existing boundaries uh, and any landscaping that was um, associated with those boundaries, um, we tried to retain them. It is a renovated cottage and it was with a view to keeping it as much as possible within the landscape in which it has always sat and, and that was also part of the brief. There is just a little lane servicing the property which had multiples of other uh, houses that were lived in, in in past years. And this is the first of those properties to be renovated. And hopefully in, in time to come, it'll be a new little cluster of buildings to try and revive, I suppose, to, uh, it as a little residential space, Brandon Village. When I approached this house, not having been there before, I was immediately struck by that lovely sweeping drive um, coming into the property, the landscaping, and the use of the stone walls as, as a feature to guide you into that lovely front door. It's a very welcoming feature of the property that almost draws you in to, to come in and, and explore the home. The original orientation of the property um, had front door access on, on the northern side of the building, or kind of northwest, I suppose. Our initial thoughts were that we should change the orientation and have the aspect towards the seaside with a lot of glass and openness out onto, out onto that garden. From the front, the no front of the building, onto the driveway in that. The ground is somewhat more elevated. It didn't have any big presence in, in positioning a front door on that elevation due to the topography. So what we decided on was that we would create a little entrance lobby, porch lobby, with the door so facing, and then to create just some little walls as would have been seen in old cottages, typical type cottages uh, back in the day with steps leading to the front door and then we have a disabled access, a little ramp from, from the side of those walls so it was to create an openness and a welcome to visitors to the property but also I suppose to create a buffer to the actual building itself as opposed to just having the front entrance door on the original back wall of the building as it had been presented. Um, and Suzanne, just in terms of the ground floor, the, the layout, and I suppose the maximising of those views um, in the main sitting area, and also the roof height and those features, can you just talk to us a little about those, please? I guess the most awkward thing about the house where it was on the site was that the view is to the north. And generally, we tried to open up a house to the southwest to maximise the light and bring it in. So there was a combination of having windows in the southwest while also having large portions of glazing to the north to capture those views because it would be terrible to cut them off from the house when they're there. And again, the, the house that was there had higher ceilings and it had a mezzanine overlooking the ground floor. So to maintain that, we created a multi-purpose space upstairs, which would mirror what was there originally um, while still making, while it was a single story small cottage, it's nice to have the extra overflow space up on the mezzanine for just sitting and relaxing. And I loved the feature too, Suzanne, of the open stairs. And um, so when you, you arrive in from the hall, you're not faced with a wall. There's a lovely sense of you know, a surprise and wondering what's in behind the, the, the staircase. And then of course the view opens as you move around. Can you just explain your rationale behind that? The staircase provides a bit of screening from the living area from the front door. And it just gives that, it blocks it off without having a wall there being a physical barrier. You can still see slightly through it, but it, there is a visual barrier in front of you. 
and having the stairs a part of the kitchen space means the mezzanine is also part of the kitchen space. It's not uh, a separate room tucked away in a corner. Then in terms of the the layout and the plan form, the, the scale and massing of the extension is, is beautifully in keeping with the area. And I'm just kind of wondering then about the, the decision to have a bedroom at ground floor level. The couple that are living in the property are they're a retired couple. So the intention was to provide for an open plan space for good circulation within the living accommodation and also within their bedroom and bathroom area. There's a good good circulation, good space, and uh, it's all all positioned on the ground floor with that in mind because it is a retired couple just for ease of access to the various spaces within within the accommodation. Yeah, I was very taken when you told me about the, the little seat in the hall for putting on your boots and things like that going in and out of the house. And again, as, as we referenced earlier, they're an outdoor couple. So again, it's just when they're coming and going to the building, they can sit on their little bench, hang up their coat overhead, put on their boots and, and off they go yeah. for the day. Yeah. And isn't it those um, design decisions that need time and consideration? And also, I suppose, that, that, that we, we, we learn and we're exposed to these ideas. We see them in other places and that they're so important to comfort and to daily living. It comes back to, I suppose, design items, but it, it's design items that have to be laid and considered based on a, a client's brief and their requirements and I suppose what their activities are and what they enjoy doing and and you need to make provision in your design for mm. any items that are based on a, on your client's choices and what their activities are I suppose. And Susanna I suppose just to finish off James just alluded there to the importance of a good relationship between client and project architect and I suppose the need to understand what people need now and what they'll need in the future can you just maybe just conclude with why it's so important to employ an architect for a build like this? I guess the thing to keep in mind is that an architect will look at what you want to achieve from a building it's not a generic house from a book or anything like that Everything is taken from your needs to match the site that you are building on or the house that you are renovating. So we'll take into account every aspect of that to come up with a plan that is fit just for you, for your family and for your home. Well, thank you very much, James. Thank you. It's been a beautiful morning here in Brandon. So um, thank you so much.